Hello, my name is Adam and welcome back to my channel where I make a tabletop role-playing game from scratch on camera. And we're going into the realm of magic in this episode. Before we start today's episode, I just want to remind you of the 96 likes. Before I started this project with Explorers RPG, I've been using this book to just note down different stuff that is role-playing related. And I think this will be fun and interesting for world builders, role players and, well, anyone. So 96 likes and I will make a video where I go through the 96 pages that I have here. And while you're down there, please press the subscribe button, but let's go on to the video. Just so you know, I'm trying out this new camera setup right here and I've currently set it to occasionally just wander around during this video. Please give me some feedback on what you guys think about this. I'm aiming for this video to be more lifelike, but it could also just be annoying to watch. Please leave a comment and let me know. One philosophy that I like to stick to is to keep the core mechanics the same throughout the whole game. I don't know if that philosophy is a good one, so we'll just have to see where this takes us. And when I say core mechanics, I don't mean resolution mechanics, which resolves a conflict or an action. I mean the fundamental rules of similar scenarios of a game. Magic systems are fundamentally resource management systems. The same with inventory systems and in many games also health and injury systems. I therefore want all my resource management systems to be similar at the core. And with that I want to look back at my inventory system that I made in episode 29. Man, that's almost half a year ago. To refresh your pristine memory from six months ago, here are the basics of the inventory system. You have six slots of inventory. It doesn't count clothes, bags, candles or cutlery, but actual equipment that have a mechanic in the game. That means swords, ladders and tools, etc. The rest is just flavor. These six slots can hold three types of items. Basic items, specialized items, and artifacts. Basic items are stuff like torches, rope, a knife maybe. Specialized items are weapons, armor, or tools like a sledgehammer, a pickaxe, or a lockpick. Artifacts are magical items that are unique and have a special ability. And instead of explaining the mechanics for basic and specialized items and artifacts, I'll explain how the magic system works instead. You have a component pouch. It also has six slots and contains three types of items. Ingredients, class-specific items and artifacts. See what I did there? Ingredients are sort of the backbone of the spellcasting system. Like basic items, they are a bundle of undefined items until you use them. If you have one slot of ingredients, you get a d4 magic die. Two slots with ingredients give you a d6 magic die. Three slots give you a d8 4, a d10, 5 or more give you d12. Every time you cast a spell, you roll your magic die against the spell's cost. If you roll over, you succeed. If you roll equal to or lower, you fail. You still manage to cast the spell, but you lose an ingredient. I must admit that I think this system is brilliant in many ways. 
Firstly, when you fail a roll and therefore lose an ingredient, you get a lower magic die. If you start with two slots with ingredients and fail your roll with a d6 magic die, you're left with one slot of ingredients and therefore only a d4. This makes it so that more ingredients give you higher dice and the opportunity to cast bigger spells. This also means that you can't save your big spells till the end of the day. In D&D you have one or two high level magic spells per day and you tend to save them to the very last moment to use them because they're valuable. I hate this type of playstyle because you're purposely doing less damage and being less efficient just in case someone stronger are around the corner. Here instead you can only cast a spell that cost 11 if you have 5 or 6 slots of ingredients. If you spend most of the time casting spells that cost 2 or 3, you will eventually fail a roll and go down to 4 or less ingredients, which means you can't cast those high level spells anymore. But I hear you say, but I want to cast high level spells at the final boss. Well, I have a fix. Ingredients can be found in the wild. I don't have a specific mechanic for it, but I'll add a way for you to forage for more ingredients. Also, ingredients can be shared. One player can sacrifice their magic power to give more to someone else by trading component slots. I could go on and on about why I like this system, but I'll do that in a different episode. Now let's go over to the two other types of components you can store in your component pouch. Artifacts are unique items. Items like moon dust, an amulet with a bound spirit, or the fang of a hundred year old wyvern. Something rare, unique and which has its own ability. They're similar to magic items in any fantasy game. I haven't figured out any artifacts yet, but I know I want some setting specific items at some point, so I'm just adding them in. That leaves us with class specific components. These are like specialized items because they also have a specific purpose. You can cast many generic spells with ingredients. But to get the powerful and specialized spells, you need class-specific components in your pouch. I must admit that this is a very rough idea since I haven't even begun on figuring out which classes there are, or even what a class is, or if I'm even using classes. But I know that I want some sort of direction for characters that make them mechanically different from each other. So far, I have the idea of three types of spellcasters. I'll go into these three types of spellcasters in the next episode, and they are the Witch, the Runesmith, and the Iron Priest. The Witch, or Druid, or Shaman, or Alchemist, or whatever, uh, double down on the use of ingredients. Currently I'm planning on giving them so-called focused ingredients that work like ingredients but that also have an aspect to them. A crow's feather might have a darkness or a fly aspect attached to them. I'm not quite sure how but I'm want the witch to combine these aspects into really powerful spells and be very versatile caster. The underlying mechanic I'm aiming for is that the witch can cast many types of spells 
and are rarely bound to the types of spells they can cast and can easily swap out these so-called aspects to change their repertoire of spells. The runesmith will also work with aspects, but carve them onto items using runes. Runes can't be combined like the witch can with the focused ingredients, but runes are more powerful spells focused on one aspect. You might have a sword with a fire rune, which is used to cast fire-related spells. The goal is for the runesmith to have more stable repertoire of spells, but they will be able to cast those spells with less risk of losing the rune. I'm not quite sure how to make it work mechanically yet. As I said, it's still a rough sketch. Lastly, the Iron Priest, which is the 40k Inquisitor of the bunch. In a lot of folklore, iron and steel are often used to repel monsters. Iron priests are the monster exterminators focused on using iron to repel and kill monsters. And I imagine them having a sort of bullfighting strategy where they're up against this powerful monster but they evade and dance around while they slowly build up a sort of iron energy finally ending in a death blow where the monster instantly dies. I have no idea how to implement this yet, I just know that their component pouch will be full of iron. I'll get back to the mechanics of class specific components in the next episode since I haven't figured out the mechanics just yet. In the meantime, you can leave a comment if you have an idea of an aspect such as fire, darkness or nature. The main goal of this magic system is that it is the same for all players. The ingredients and artifacts give players general tools they can use in free and creative ways and the class specific components unlock heavy hitting abilities that have unique mechanics. The limited number of slots also give the players decisions. Do you aim for few heavy hitter spells for specific purposes or many weak spells for multiple purposes? Do you risk losing resources by choosing powerful spells or save it for casting many weak spells? So what do you think so far? It's not much to go on yet, I know, but the baseline is there. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions or maybe other magic mechanics you think are cool. Like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this with your GM, they'll probably like it. See ya!